Hey you all, this is Toya and thank you for watching Toya JTV. Today I want to go over 10 hair statements that you've always believed are true. They really are not. Alright, so I'm going to jump right on in. The first statement is that trimming your ends will help your hair grow. This is, this is not true. Trimming your ends does not help your hair grow. It does help your hair to stay healthy, but it does not help your hair to grow because your hair grows from the root, all right? It doesn't grow from down here. So nothing you do down here is gonna affect what you do up here. So trimming your ends does not help your hair grow. I'm, I'm sorry to tell you, it does not. And now, like I said, it does make your hair look healthier. It does, um, contribute to healthy hair but actually contributing to hair growth it does not statement number two you can fix split ends this is partly true you can fix that split ends when you cut them off all right there's no product out there that is going to fix your split ends other than a pair of shears once you get those shears to it yeah they'll instantly be fixed but other than that no you cannot fix your split ends there are some products out there that will you can put on your hair and it will just give the appearance of fixed split ends all right but it does not fix them it's like putting a band-aid on top of something but when you take that band-aid off the sore is still there you know so no don't believe that something can fix your split ends any product that says it will they are lying to you keep your money okay number three a lot of people say that stress causes their hair to turn gray you know even my husband swears up and down that the reason why he has gray in his beard he claims that he didn't have gray in his beard until he got married okay that's not true <laughs> That is not true. And then, you know, a lot of people, a lot of my clients, they'll say, I say, oh, you got a couple of gray hairs. They'll say, oh, yeah, that's my husband, my kids, my this, that. You know, they're getting on my nerves. They're making me get gray hair. No. Gray hair is hereditary. If your parents, especially, um, is, is very influential from the mother's side. So if your mother had a lot of gray, to, for instance, if your mom had a gray patch, your grandma had a gray patch, Nine times out of ten, you're going to have a gray patch in your hair. If your mom grayed when she was in her 20s, nine times out of ten, you're going to start graying in your 20s. You know, my mom is in her 60s, and she does not have many gray hairs. She didn't gray until much later. And even right now, I think I've seen two, and I'm in my 30s. So, you know, then I know another girl. She, um... I mean, she had to get a rinse every time she came to see me because her root, she had two inches. You know how you have two inches of new growth? She had two inches of pure white hair, you know, and she was only in her 20s. So she would have to rinse her hair black every time because she didn't want that to show. So, but that's hereditary. It's been going on in her family from generation to generation. So stop telling your parents and your spouse and your kids and your cousins and your job that they making you get gray hair. That is not true. You can blame your mother and your father and possibly your grandmother and grandfather for your gray hair. All right. So whoop, there it is. Number four. If you pull one gray hair, two will come in its place. <laughs> That's not true. Trust me. Like I just said, I have one, maybe two gray hairs. I have pulled them both, and I still got two gray hairs. I don't have four, six, eight, ten. They do not multiply. If you pull them out, then there is going to grow another one in its place. It's not going to grow back black, but you're not going to have two that replace the one. Number five, greasing your hair will help it grow. Lord, y'all, please, don't grease your hair anymore. Especially if you are relaxed and wear your hair down, uh, don't do that. It's just going to make it be more heavy, and it's not. It's going to make you not have any volume to your hair, no body, no movement at all. It's going to look like it's stuck to your hair, and also it clogs the pores, all right? And it doesn't allow for your hair's natural oils to come on through because it's acting as a barrier, uh, but no, grease does not make your hair grow. I, I've had one girl say that, um, you know, when she was little, all her mom used to do to her hair was grease her scalp and her hair was all down her back. And I was like, okay. But also, when you were little, number one, you didn't have a relaxer. Uh, number two, that means you were not getting a relaxer every six weeks. Okay. Also, your mom was not putting 
probably any heat on your hair when you were a child. You probably were getting braids or plaits or something like that. So you didn't have a chemical. You didn't have um, heat. You went, Your hair wasn't being manipulated a lot, you know, which is what we do now when we get grown. And that's what caused your hair to grow, not greasing your scalp. That did not cause your hair to grow. There are several other factors that you probably don't even think about that, you know, mom was taking care of your hair and that's what caused your hair to grow. But grease, that, that was not one of the things. Number six, frequent brushing your hair causes it to grow. Um, you know, I've seen this on a couple of movies. People say, go, you know, brush your hair, brush your hair at night so it can grow. No, that's, that's not true. Um, if you brush your hair too much, it can start breaking. Um, so you don't want to put like a bunch of manipulation on your hair. The less, basically when you leave your hair alone, it'll grow. It'll do what it needs to do. When you doing all these things to it all the time, that's what is hindering it from growing. So just let it do its own thing. You can, yeah, brush it daily or comb it daily, but not like all the time throughout the day, every single, you know, every time you look, you're brushing your hair. You don't have to do all that because it's, it's not gonna, you know, make it grow any faster. Number seven, taking prenatal vitamins will help your hair grow. <laughs> No, taking prenatal vitamins, especially if you are not pregnant, is not going to make your hair grow. Uh, pregnant women's hair grows because they have a lot of hormones in them and they need the prenatal vitamins because prenatal vitamins are enough for you and baby. So it's enough for two people. Um, if you are not pregnant and you're taking prenatal vitamins, you're getting more of the nutrients than you really need, which could actually have the adverse effect on your hair so you don't want to take prenatal vitamins thinking your hair is going to grow because it's not the case there are a lot of other factors going on in pregnant women that's causing their hair to grow um, like i said they have an influctuation of hormones that's going on in their bodies a lot of things are going on to where it's causing the hair to grow faster um and just like after i had my second baby a lot of times after you have that baby and those those hormones stop your hair will just fall out, you know, not all of it, but like, especially me, like around my edges, um, you know, in the front, um, postpartum alopecia and that's completely normal. And that's just because it's like your body is shocked. It's like one minute you have all these extra hormones going in your body. The next minute you don't after you have that baby. And then as your body gets back to normal, then you know, sometimes your hair can come out. So don't think they're taking the uh, prenatal vitamins. And then while we're talking about vitamins, taking uh, hair and skin and nail vitamins. Um, me personally, and this is just going based on my experience as a hairstylist. I do not think like biotin and hair, skin and nail vitamins. I don't necessarily think they help your hair grow faster. Now, I don't think they hurt your hair. You know, I don't think they cause any harm, any damage or anything like that. But I've had a lot of clients that take those vitamins on a regular basis and there, there was no change in their hair. Like I said, I don't think it's hurting cause you, you know, you need all the nutrients for your body, but you know, you're not gonna wake up and be Pocahontas one day just from taking hair skin and nail vitamin number eight if you use the same shampoo over and over it'll be less effective if you use the same shampoo all the time it will be less effective okay this is not true now I do believe that during certain times of the year your hair needs different things for instance when it's very very cold outside I do think that you need more moisturizing products for your hair because the air outside is so dry that it has an effect on your hair. So if you were using like a, a deep cleansing shampoo in the summertime and then in the wintertime when there's less moisture in the air, you're still using that deep cleansing shampoo, it's gonna seem like your hair is even drier because that's what the deep cleansing shampoo does. It takes all of the extra oils, residue, 
anything off of your hair and a lot of times in the winter you may not want that so you may be thinking oh it's the shampoo i'm using the wrong i'm i keep using this shampoo over and over so i need to try something else because it's not working anymore and that's not the case it's just that your, your atmosphere has changed so your shampoo should change instead in the winter time you should use more moisturizing products to keep your hair on the same level and have the same amount of moisture and then in the summertime you probably can use less moisturizing products because there's so much moisture in the air that you may not need an additional moisturizing shampoo so it may seem sometimes in the summertime if you use uh, a bunch of moisture stuff you may think that your hair is being getting oily when that's not the case so it really just depends on, to me, it depends on what season it is, what type of year it is, what your hair needs. Um, but if you do that and keep a, a routine, then using the same products, especially if they don't change the formula, your hair is not going to like become immune, you know, to the hair products. It's just, you have to, you have to change up your products as your hair needs different things. Once your hair needs something different, then you're going to need a different product. Because if you keep using the same thing, then no, it's not going to continue working. But, you know, if your hair stays the same all year round and you use the same thing all year round, you won't notice any, any changes. All right? Shampooing your hair too often will dry your hair out. Now, this is partially true. Um, but, like, for instance, if your hair is very oily... All right, you're going to need to shampoo your hair more often than somebody whose hair is not oily. If your hair is dry, you don't need to shampoo your hair um, more than once a week. Or it is going to seem like your hair is drier. And also, it depends on what you're using. Again, like what I just talked about, the different shampoos. If your hair is dry all the time, you don't want to use a deep cleansing shampoo because it's going to make it seem like your hair is even more dry. Um... But, like, for instance, if your hair is very oily, then you probably can shampoo your hair two, three times a week. And if you use a deep cleansing shampoo, then your hair is going to seem perfectly normal. Um, but it, it doesn't necessarily dry it out. It just all goes back to what your hair needs and then you use the type of products for what your hair needs. Lastly, uh, this has got to be the, this probably should have been number one, but... Um, the last hair statement is that dandruff is caused by a dry scalp. This is not true. Actually, dandruff is caused by a fungus that feeds off of the oils from your hair. That's why you may notice that if you shampoo your hair every two weeks, by this, you may see flakes after the first week, but by that second week, it is extremely, it, it has way more dandruff than the, the week before and that's because um your hair is secreting its own natural oil so by two weeks by the time two weeks have passed your um your own natural oils have increased in your own hair which gives the dandruff more food to feed off of so it just becomes worse and worse and worse until you shampoo your hair again that's why i tell all of my clients that have dandruff to shampoo your hair every single week because that's the only way you will keep that dandruff at bay and sometimes you may even have to use a shampoo that's um prescribed de depending on how bad it is um but you cannot go two weeks without shampooing your hair or it's just going to seem like every time you even just do this you're going to see flakes everywhere because the more oil your hair produces the more that that dandruff has to feed off of and it's just going to increase 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 and it's going to look crazy but it's not because your hair is dry or your scalp is dry is it's a fungus you know um and the oilier your hair is the worst the worst the dandruff is going to look. So you want to keep your hair moisturized and you want to keep your hair um, shampooed at least once a week to keep the dandruff at bay. All right, you all. So those are my 10 hair statements that most of us believe are true that are really not. And I hope this helped you all and I will see you all next time. Thank you for watching Toya JTV. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Talk to you all next time. Bye-bye.